Welcome, welcome back to Rise to Liberty podcast. Today I am joined by Corey Hag. Hag, right? Is that how you Hague, pronounce yep. it? Hag. Awesome. Yep. So, just real quick, Corey is a author, researcher, uh, meditator, army veteran, world traveler, father, speaker, and proponent of natural rights, spiritual anarchy, science exploration, and freedom of the individual which is exactly what makes him a perfect guest for this show. So how are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing good, man. I'm, uh, you know, working to dominate this life in every way, every day, and keeping spirits high while paying attention to all the shit that's going on in the world today and, and <laughs> trying to balance out everything and make sure that I'm, you know, able to kill it in my own personal way every single day. Um, I think that's the best that anybody can can strive for. Um, but, uh, overall I'm feeling really good. I, I, I see, I see things going very positively for the pe- for the world because there's more and more of us that are paying attention. There's more and more of us that want something new. So I'm feeling very inspired and, and, uh, happy to be alive. I would, I would have to, uh, agree with you. I think, I think the powers that be definitely overplayed their hand with the whole COVID thing. And because of that, it, it woke a lot of people up. It shook them out of their, uh, their slumber. And you wouldn't believe all the stories I hear. It's, you know, because of COVID or because of, uh, you know, the lockdowns, this or that, I started paying attention, hear it all the time. And, uh, you know, it's not what I wanted and I wish we could have been woken up another, another way, but you know, it's a silver lining, I guess, out of such a uh, a terrible thing to experience for all of us. It's kind of how it always goes, though, isn't it? You know, you got the population, you know, every major revolution that's ever occurred in the, it globally, it always comes from the middle class or whatever might be. It might have been the middle class in other societies. Right. And yeah. uh, the middle class is always the most comfortable class, really, because you have the striving top tier, whatever individuals that you know, they take on the responsibilities and everything of the society of that level. So they get the benefits of it. So they maintain it, they hold it up, but the middle class just stays in this kind of comfortable bubble while the lower class is always either succumbing to what's happening or the, or they have their own striving, but they haven't made it to the middle class or, you know, other circumstances or they're firebrands like me and don't really care to, you know, become middle class or become, become any of those things in the society. But, um, Every, rev- every revolution in, in, in history it happens with the middle class and it takes time. It takes a lot of effort and the fire starters, the, the, the people that are the fire brands that are saying, Hey, something's wrong. It takes a long time to reach enough of that population. That's, that's comfortable for, for them to say, you know what, something really is wrong. And the interesting thing there is that the middle class never rises because of the, the deficit they feel in their life. They rise because of the hope for something better. And so when we, when we say, oh, there's all these problems in the world and, and, and all this, all this garbage happening, the middle class, you know, falls on deaf ears a lot of the time. They they say, yeah, but I'm still comfortable. It's when you give them hope that, you know, that, that thing, that, that ambition, that aspiration that they have, that they can enhance their lives and become greater. When you give them that, all of a sudden they say, oh, you know what? I, I do feel limited. There's more that I can do. And then they all you know, the, the big wave starts to, starts to form and, and turns into a tsunami and things change. So one, one thing I kind of want to get into just to get to know you a little bit better um, and to figure out where all of this started, but what, what led you to what you believe now? Like, what, was it a, a light switch moment where it's just, just like overnight or was it gradual to where, you, you slowly came into, uh, into this way of thinking and, uh, basically just where you are now. You know, I think, I think for everybody, it's kind of the combination of all the different factors. Um, and they just play out, you know, however the, the environment, life circumstances and your personal character kind of allow it to my journey, uh, you know, my whole life, ever since I was a kid, I was, uh, uh, you know, warrior spirit, um, I was concretized in the idea that truth 
is the number one thing that we always need. We, we, I, I crave the truth. And, um, there's a story that my, my mom tells me, um, which is that as a kid, I, I you know, I, I wasn't able to hold secrets. Um, you know, if people whispered things around me, I'd be out there shouting it to the world and telling people and it was innocent, but it was, it was because I couldn't stand holding it in. It was like, no, that's the truth that needs to come out. That needs to be, you know, that that's, that's real. And, um, and when I was 17, I joined the military, uh, joined the army and I served six years in the military. I went to Afghanistan. I saw a bunch of crazy shit and, and, um, and the craziest thing is that I saw into the real reason why we were in Afghanistan, which was um, to be close to bigger enemies. Afghanistan wasn't really an enemy. It wasn't really a powerful threat for us. It had been decimated by Russia and uh, it still lives as a extremely poverty stricken and, and conflict, uh, you know, internal conflicts uh, reign there. But, what I saw was the extraction of resources, the building of massive bases with 90% of the people there being military uh, contractors, private contractors, um, working, you know, secret, secret operations. And, um, and so that was a big turning point. When I saw that 2010, I saw that and I said, mm, no, nah, I don't know if I can serve this anymore. I don't know if I could be a part of this thing. I already knew, you know, government was corrupt and it was all garbage, but I, that warrior spirit wanted to express. So I was like, okay, I'm, I, I always knew I was going to be in the military. But when I saw that, I said, no, nah, I can't serve this anymore. And I got back to the States and I had a year of just screwing up my life, uh, you know, drinking alcohol and doing drugs and bad women and, you know, who knows what. And, <laughs> and once I got through all of that, that whole process of being part of the government and then coming back and trying to figure out how to, what I'm going to do next and going through all the tribulations there, when I came out the other side, um, that warrior spirit started to express itself by fighting the things that I saw, the corruption that I saw, the nonsense that I saw, the, the evil that's, that was inherent in what we were doing and, 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 and what I became aware of. And so ever since 2012, late 2011, early 2012, um, I've been on the mission of uplifting humanity through expressing truths, um, creating greater, uh, you know, community action, uh, real calls to action, not so much just expressing, um, you know, cause there's so much, there's so much talk. Everybody, everybody pretty much knows even the people that don't re like they, they, that are using words like, Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist deep inside. They know something's wrong. They know what's they, that, what you're saying is true, but it, it's hard to, it's hard to get past the feeling of that's scary and I'm comfortable. And so, moving past that just we're talking about it to what the fuck are we gonna do about it right now today where are we going that's been my biggest my biggest calling um and uh and so i put together social clubs and and the newspaper liberty and Censor newspaper i've written two books right in my third now and um tried to organize people in many various ways still do still doing it um and it's all because it's, it's kind of like what Lewis Carroll said, the guy who wrote the uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. He said something to the effect of the only real purpose of life is to serve others. The only real joy you can get is in service to other human beings. And I, I feel that very deeply. And so if we're alive and we see something that's wrong, it's our job, it's our duty, it's our obligation to face that. Because not everybody else might see it or have the courage or have the, the energy to go and, and confront it. If you got that, then it's your duty. Uh, if you can see something that nobody else can see, it's your duty. And even if everybody can see it, if they're not taking action on it and you know you can, it's your duty. Uh, it goes beyond just choice. It goes beyond just, uh, uh, you know, the fact that you exist. It's, it's because you exist and because you have the capacity to do something, then it becomes your obligation. Um, you know, whether you believe in, in monotheistic God or whether you believe in, uh, whatever, whatever you believe in the fact that you exist and the fact that you have the ability to cognate and to, to, 
to do things in this life and you see suffering in this world, that 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 is your calling. When you see it and you have the ability, that's it. That's what you got to do. And um, I think most people ignore that. I again, I would agree. I, I just focus on the truth. That's it. If I see it and it's it rings that that bell of truth, that really clear signal. That, that's that's the you can't argue with it. You know, yep. and something comes in in just the right way. And it's like, I know that for sure. I don't know anything about the universe, but in that moment, I know that for sure. That's that's when you got to take action. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the basis for my 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 whole theme of my life. Not not too uh, too different than mine. Uh, other than you know, I'm not a veteran. Um, I decided to take the different route. Uh, believe that. I would be the person exercising my rights that, you know, at the time I had definitely a different view on the world. Um, it was more of a, well, I'll, I'll be the reason that uh, everyone's off defending the rights because if, if nobody's using the rights, then <clears throat> we're exercising the rights, then there's no point in people trying to defend them. At least that was my thinking at the time. Um, that makes sense though. Yeah. It, what is there to defend? What is there to defend in that case? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know, the, the military just didn't seem right for me. Um and and so I decided to go the other route. And I I had one of my best friends uh join the, the Marines and he ended up getting sent over to Afghanistan, and that's really what got me involved in the daily politicking and uh didn't take long to see everything for what it is and i mean at this point i'm you know an anarcho-capitalist and just looking for any way to delegitimize or subvert the state um which is the whole reason i started this podcast uh was I saw the attacks on free speech and even though, especially the, the Liberty podcast um, market, but the podcast market in general is saturated there. There's so many, so many podcasts. And my thought was, well, it's just dog pile because they can't censor all of us. So we'll just give them so much material that it's impossible to censor everyone. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of, kind of my thought process and I wanted to be able to provide a platform for for the truth because just like you the truth is like my guiding light that's the only thing that really makes sense um, and there's just something like innate in me that uh, that needs to not only find the truth but to speak up for the truth and it's it's a uh difficult battle i'll i'll say that <laughs> it's it's usually the the more difficult option to do the right thing um but i did want to touch on something that you had mentioned uh it's the the idea of of duty so specifically within the liberty movement i've noticed that there's this i'm not even sure how to categorize it really but there's a, a group of people that seem to overlook these ideas of duty or honor. Um, it's more of a, well, if you're not hurting anybody, like actively hurting somebody, then you can just do whatever you want. And I, I disagree with that. I think that all of us have a, a duty to leave society better off than when we found it. It doesn't mean you have to, but if you don't, I think you're kind of an asshole for doing so. Um, so have, have you noticed these, these people within the Liberty movement that are, that, that don't really care about making things better or even making things worse, but they're just not actively working towards a better future. Yeah. Yeah. And there, you know, there's a lot of different angles on that too. 
and I talk about this quite a bit. I've I've been pretty public about my opinion about what happens within these, uh, you know, freedom oriented liberty communities, um, just like what happens within the so on, you know, quote unquote spiritual communities, um, which is that I find that there's more uh, conceit and hubris and there's more falsity um within these communities than there is in the general population at least the general population is honest usually about about most things about where they're at and when you look at like for example the spiritual community where you you know every, everybody gets on the fad and and says the right things and looks the right way and and, and whatever and uh if you don't do that you're not part of the club but really you know, deeply spiritual people aren't the ones going and shouting around about it. They're not the ones that are, that are, that are trying to look like everybody else and do everything like that. And the same thing with the Liberty community. A lot of times what you find is that the people who shout it out the loudest, um, or are the most supported, um, you know, you got CIA backing and NSA backing and government backing for some of these people. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, exposure of that type of thing going on. Like what happened to Anarchapulco? Um, there's a lot of like idealism going on. Oh, this would be great if we got to that point. And then you say, okay, what are you doing to get there? And they say, oh, well, I'm watching YouTube videos. And it's like, okay, that's great. You're learning. <laughs> but what, 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 what do you do on your daily, daily basis? How are yeah. you encouraging it, it, You know, the growth of your own liberty and the liberty of society in your own life? Are you standing in your freedoms? Are you expressing your freedoms? Uh, are, you know, do you live that way? So I, I, you know, I, for example, there's a growing movement to um, uh, right to travel movement, and I'm big in this. I'm 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 huge on this idea because when you let one right slide, it 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 denigrates the rest of it. It it says, okay, you don't have that right anymore. That means that we can take away all the other rights. You know, we can start to regulate, we can start to do whatever. So the same thing with firearms, the same thing with all of it. When they take one, when they regulate one, now it, it's a domino effect. They can take them all, they can regulate all. And so, you know, I don't just talk about right to travel. I live that shit. I, I, I don't do any of the driver's licensing or, or, or registration or uh, any of that crap. And, um, uh, you know, it's the same across the board with all the things Um you know, you won't find me uh, engaging with the IRS in any way. You won't find me engaging with any of that crap. Uh, the moment that you allow your principles, your virtues, your your standards, your boundaries to be crossed a, a millimeter, it expresses to these people, these these fucking tyrants, that you're you're gonna allow them to to chip away at you. And when you stand your ground and you just say, no, it's not happening. This line is not getting crossed. I'll die for it. You might die. You might, you might be assaulted. You might be, you know, criminal action might be taken against you, but at least you died in honor. And, um, and this plays into a bunch of other stuff too, where, where, you know, we don't really have men anymore. We don't really have women anymore. Nobody knows how to live in honor and nobody cares about it anymore. We're, we're obsessed with shallow fads and, and, um, and nonsense and gossip and, um, and everything's this like ephemeral, uh, nonsensical world, cartoon world. Yeah. Uh, this is so is empty. Depth? Where's the depth? Where's the character yeah. of your life? When I meet somebody who has character, I get so excited. I, I just, I, 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 I light up like a light bulb, you know, I'm, I, I want to engage with them. I want to say, okay, what are you about? What are we going to do? How's this, you know? And um, it's, it's rare for me to find somebody and, you know, especially, you know, a local person where I can engage with them. It's easy to find people. It's easier to find people online and, and uh, especially people are active doing podcasts, doing, doing shows, doing yeah. uh, whatever they're doing in the world. But we're all kind of disparate. We're all spread out. And even within those people, within that liberty community, there's so much nonsense going on. So I really I really pick gems out of the the crowd, you know, and yeah. I pick them all and I say, OK, that's a good one. I want to I want to work with that one. I want you know, I pick them out very selectively, very carefully, very discriminatively. And I say, that's the one. And um, and the rest of it, I just I just sit back and I observe because there's just a lot of nonsense. Um, and 
There seems know, to be a lot of grifters. Yeah, yeah, there is. And I don't, you know, it's not a hundred percent. Nothing's a hundred percent. It's all yeah. always, everything is the Gaussian curve. Everything's on a bell curve and there's outliers and then there's the main body. And so when I look at the Liberty movement, I still see it as that Gaussian curve. I say most people are yeah. within this belt, uh, you know, the, the biggest part of the curve, these people are, are really uh, just following. And just like any other movement in it, you know, about the rainbow family, sounds familiar so i'm but nothing's coming to mind so i'm just gonna say no well the rainbow family is the longest uh standing anarchist community in the world as far as i'm okay. aware i've heard of it. I'm aware. Yeah. and there's over two million people that have been to a gathering of some type of the rainbow family um and it's based on prophecies and it's based on the evolution of beatnik culture and the love revolution and uh freedom movements of different kinds and um, and what we say in, in the rainbow gatherings, uh, in the rainbow family, we say, uh, focalizers, and that just means that you, you feel called to walk a certain direction down a certain path and you walk alone, you charge forth. If anybody chooses to follow you, then you are focalizing not just yourself, but for other people. So in the same sense, what's a real leader? It's not somebody who demands by force other people to do what they're doing. It's that you see something and you go forth. When other people see you going that direction, if they choose to follow you, now you're a leader of man. You're, you're, you're a leader of men. You, you, uh, you carry it, the tide with you. And, um, and at any time, people can choose to go another direction or another direction, but a, a true leader is just like that. And... Um, and there's not many that are really walking the path, the red road, the razor's edge. The, the they're not really staying true, pure on the on course, and and that's what's needed. And we look back, and we can we can uh, we can look at people like Martin Luther King, and we can say, oh, he's bad for this, 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 and this. But the thing is, he did stay true to what he was intending. And he stayed on it. And that's why he was a great leader and why people wanted to follow him because every step of the way, he was staying true to that course that he had, he, he had set for himself and he just carried the tide with him. And, um, and there's a lot of great leaders in our history, not all of them for the right reasons or, or leading us to the right ends. Uh, you know, Hitler was a great leader actually. Yeah. And people, people very efficient. <laughs> every, everybody hates Hitler. Okay, whatever. I, I don't care. It, it, for me, it's not looking at it in those kind of contexts, good and bad or whatever. It's, it's, was he successful in what he put himself out there to do? Well, for a long time, like 20 years, he was not. He was belittled. He was jailed. He was, he didn't get a lot of success. All of a sudden, he exploded with success because he'd put the time in, he put the work in, he'd set a name for himself, he found the connections, he did all the work over those 20 years, got himself there. And then when he was there, he actually excelled as a leader. He wasn't a great military leader, he was kind of an idiot when it came to military stuff, I and mean, he, he should have done better with that. But he was a great leader. People followed him because he was inspiring, he was motivating, he he said the right things for the time, um, and the people that he was talking to, it, it just worked. Um, so there's good leaders, there's bad leaders, um, as far as like your success and then whatever you do with that is, is a different thing. Um, but we don't have very many really good leaders in the Liberty movement. We have a lot of people that pretend, um, Lots. and the people, <laughs> the people that I've met that are really good leaders that, that I say, yeah, I would go with them. Um, they're usually not the biggest names. They're usually they're usually kind of off to the side, and because they're not they're not a, allowed to get to that point. Because no matter what happens, I mean, there's regulatory bodies are, are are there, authoritarian bodies are there watching very closely to what we are doing, mm -hmm. and they put they push influence. They they. They make a lot of determinations about the way that all these things happen. And, uh, and that just means that we need even better leaders. We need, we need people to strive to be really great. You know, one thing I've noticed, and maybe you'll agree with this, but 
we don't have heroes anymore. There's nobody because I, I agree with the Martin Luther King Jr. thing. Like you you look into what he really was about and he wasn't a good person. He did good things. Um but there was some a really checkered past. With that said, I I think it is important to have these heroes though. Um, I think it's also important that we're honest about them, that they're people, they're fallible, but that doesn't take away from the good that they can contribute. But it seems as though that we don't have the hero anymore. Uh, it almost seems like, you know, the more superhero movies we get, the less like real life heroes we have. And I don't think that's, you know, I don't really think there's a correlation there, but it just, you know, timeline wise, it just kind of seems uh, like a coincidence. There's, there's nobody to look up to. I mean, well, well, uh, one of, one of my friends is also in the Liberty movement, Eddie and De La Boise squared wrote a book called government, the greatest scam in history. And in that book, he shows how they use religious uh, imagery around our political leaders today to yeah. reinforce this uh, this perspective that our political leaders are actually like divine beings. They're holy. They're they're uh, you know, and and that, that's yeah. why we that's part of the reason why we have a religious following and factionism for these different people because they have to create the contest as well. But like, uh, you know, who's the hero today? Trump. Who's the hero today? Biden for others. Who's the hero today? It's, it's these political characters. But where's the real virtuous heroes, the real heroes, the the the, the divine beings? Um, where's the Hercules, the Jesus, the the, uh, the the people that are representative of the highest quality of being? And yeah, I agree. You don't see much of it. You don't see any much of it in a real sense. You see a lot of like playing around with these ideas and manipulating them to fit uh, the social paradigm of the moment. But, you know, we don't have a Hercules of today. Hercules was the Jesus figure before Jesus um, amongst a lot of others, you know? Um, and even for Christians, I don't think Jesus really acts as a, a hero figure um, or, or anything like that anymore. You got like diehard Christians maybe, but, um, but I think a lot of people just say I'm Christian because they, they just think that they're Christian. I, I don't think that's really a, a, a depth of character anymore for the wide population. Again, Gaussian curves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would have to agree with that. Um, you know, I, I really feel bad for young men. Um, Cause I mean, not even that long ago there, there was, you know, even just fictional heroes to look up to uh, strong men doing the right thing. And, of course, with the rise of the idea of toxic mas masculinity, which is the most retarded thing I've ever heard, um, it's, it's just been entirely damaging. Uh, the idea that because something or someone is masculine, then they're toxic, um, that's, that's crazy. That, that's a crazy statement to make. Um, there are toxic traits in people but it's really sexist to say that one is more than the other. And it's like, I don't know if you've met some of these toxic women out there, but it's not uh, exclusive just to men. Yeah. Um, and well, I think, feminism, feminism has destroyed us. Um, has, has a, you know, along with everything else that's, that's been put out there, but feminism has been a major, uh, a major blow, major blow. And I think we're going to come out the other side of that, though. I really do. I think that we're going to come out the other side because the pendulum swings. And unfortunately, yeah. I don't think that we're going to come out the other side in a healthy way. I actually think just like like the political spectrum swings, so does the the social spectrum in every way. So when 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 all this uh, uh, like wokeism mentality um, or what they call liberalism today, which liberalism was co-opted into the this this new ideology um but anyway uh when the pendulum sp swings back however far they push it this way it's gonna swing back with that same momentum in the other direction 
So, you know, we, we swing out on, uh, you know, everybody's liberated to do anything they want to extreme authoritarianism on the other side. And it's the same thing that happened in Germany. It's the reason why Hitler rose to power because yeah. they had the Weimar Republic, which is basically where we're at today. Same kind of social norms of uh, sexual um, deviation, um, breakdown of family structures, um, uh, inflation and, and devaluation of their currency, um, internal and exterior, uh, internal and external enemies and breakdown and, and uh, defunction and, and, problems we see it, it's happening again and what happens on the other side it's some authoritarian figure maybe it's trump or maybe it's um some other kind of figure will come in to be the 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 archetype of that authoritarian uh new wave and in the end it'll be a bigger problem than even this wokeism it'll it'll be a problem because that's when we end up in FEMA camps, uh, you know, yeah. camps. That's when we end up seeing genocides happen. That's when we see civil wars happen. That's when we, and you can see it all kind of moving that way. Now, everybody's yep. fighting the wokeism. This huge population of people is fighting it so hard that they will defeat it, but they'll defeat it in authoritarianism and the true nature of things that, that isn't even in the center. Cause it's not about independence, it, it, uh, uh, independent, uh, people it's, it's, a broader scope of perception. And so instead of revolution, we, you know, we got to talk about Renaissance and enlightening of the whole body of people. And it's like, I thought this was funny. Uh, speaking of, you know, people that have been, uh, is that Fauci? Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Fauci prayer candle. Uh, you know, speaking of people that have been turned into, uh, quasi religious figures. It's yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And, you know, this isn't the first time people do not study history. And uh, and, you know, if you talk to someone and they're like, oh, yeah, I study history. And it's like, what books did you read? Did you read the textbooks they gave you in the federally mandated school? Because that's not studying (laughs) history. Did you just watch YouTube videos? That's not studying history. You really want to study history. You got to go to source. You got to go to the original documents. You got to you got to dive into it. And it's getting harder and harder today in some ways because of censorship and because of. uh, algorithms on like Google search engine and and whatever that guide your your before you as you're typing in it guides you to a certain yeah. uh, uh, outcome that they want you to see. So you really have to do research. But the internet's amazing; you can find anything on there. So it's kind of both ends of it. If you know how to use it to find the information, you can find it. If you don't know how to use yeah. it, you'll be guided to the same crap that you know textbooks give you. But if you really study history, you'll see these are all cycles; they're all patterns. And when you stop looking at events, this event happened and then this event happened and then this event happened and you're just following the now event. When you start creating a a link between these things and understanding the full context of where it comes from, why it's happening, um, you know, the nature of it. So you don't even have to see the event. You just see the nature and the patterns throughout time. And you're like, oh. This has happened before. It's just happening again because we're allowing it to. This is part of our, our cycles. Yeah. And and in that sense, it's it, it's almost, you know, we have to accept to a certain degree that this is happening. What comes next isn't random. It is guided by the patterns of human nature mixed with um, the fact that w- there's some novelty to it. Um, just like, you know, globalism, the fact of a one world government kind of body, that's, that's a novel thing. I don't know of any point in history where we've had something like that, but we have seen at the time when they thought that the world extended as far as their territory went like the Roman empire or Egypt or uh, China, or when they extended out and they said, this is as far as big as the world is for us. There was one world governments at that time in their notions of the day. But, um, but now we really see the whole, the whole world is coming under one governance model. And that's pretty novel. Um, yeah. the, the ability to genetically modify human beings uh, to the degree that we can today, um, the nanotechnology that can enter into cells. I mean, these are all kind of novel aspects of how it's happening, but the pattern is the same. 
the intent of people who rise to power um, are the same. The, the, the mentality of the general population to circumstances is the same. The same modality of thought and how, how to respond to environmental situations. And a lot of this just goes back to like biological indicators. When the environment is scarce, what do you do? When the environment's abundant, what do you do? You know? And so people are just responding in, in, um, in a very reasonable way for what you would expect if you really study what's, you know, all the different factors that apply to what's happening. Um, doesn't make it any easier to swallow or doesn't make yeah. it any any easier to live in and for someone like myself it's still the journey is to it's the same get the truth out cause to action to change things and and that's part of it too that's my my archetype and role and and it's probably your archetype and role and and you, you can't allow it to overwhelm you it's it's just you're part of it and there's a broader it's a hell of a stroke. burden. There's a broader stroke of life. <laughs> there's a broader stroke of life. It's not all about me. If I die doing what I'm doing, that's fine. If um, if if three quarters of the population of the world dies because of a nuclear attack, I still say it's fine um, because it's part of a natural progression. You you try your best to 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 create a world worthy, but but that's that's the most that you can do. Um, and what happens is going to happen. So there's a, there's a level of acceptance and yeah. there's a level of duty, obligation, taking action, doing what's right, doing what's your, your truth, your, um, and just keep going forward. You know, one thing that's been concerning and you, you kind of mentioned this kind of touched on it is that there's, there's the pendulum swing and because the left is so far left that and it, they use you know terms racist white supremacist uh just whatever i'll you know pick your poison but there's going to be a certain point where and i i think we're reaching that point where people are labeled whatever they are um by somebody who can't even give you a correct definition but there's going to be a certain point where these people don't care. And then there's going to be a response, uh, you know, the equal and opposite reaction. And we are going to see a rise in a lot of these ideologies because it's going to be the mentality of like, well, that's what I'm labeled as. So I might as well be, uh, which that I think that a lot of that's human nature. Um, although I don't believe it's the correct response. Um, I, I just see a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, resurgence of racism, like actual racism. Um, the idea, um, of the ideological Nazi coming back and not that it really went anywhere, but it was, it was on its deathbed. And now it kind of seems to have this huge resurgence and it's only going to get worse as these these lunatics, because I can't think of a better term for them, will continue to cry wolf. Um, there, there isn't a Nazi problem. Like there's all ten of them hanging out in northern Idaho. Like <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, there, there's not a problem, but there's going to be. Um, I can only imagine what it's like for you know. A, a young guy being told he's terrible because of, you know, some innate characteristic that he can't change. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, he's the cause of all the world's problems. And if he gets caught up with the right people, they're going to influence him to some really bad things. And it's going to be a very easy slope to slip down. And so it's kind of like this self-fulfilling prophecy and that's one thing I try to work on is <clears throat> try to wake people up to this because language control is mind control. And that's exactly what's going on is a control of the language to be able to try and at least steer outcomes 
And one thing I wish people would realize a little bit more is that, uh, first of all, none of these people that are touted out in front of us are our saviors. No, nobody's coming to save you except for yourself. And there's, there's cults of personality that need to be kept in check. So I, I'm not, I'm not sure if you have also noticed, um, this pendulum swinging. I mean, well, you've noticed the pendulum obviously, but noticed, uh, how it's it's going to be turning um, as everyone keeps getting labeled certain things that they are not. Yeah, I mean, you, you see it today. Um, the the most um, uh, racially discriminated and sexually uh, uh, sex discriminated people are white males. Um, you see it everywhere. Uh, now white males make up the extreme majority of the workforce of the creative capacity of this nation of the military of um, leadership roles of, I mean it's it, so we're basically tearing apart uh, the people who are fundamentally responsible for maintaining this nation and obviously that's going to get a response. It just takes a little bit of time, but it's obvious, you, you know, it's, how it's going to manifest is, is who knows uh, in the end exactly how it's going to come about, but the response is going to be as extreme as it needs to be to resolve this collective libelism and and uh and uh uh slander and degrading quality that that is being put out there today by a very small actual like uh spear point of people like yeah. a very small portion of the population is actually leading the charge to to make this a standard make it a normal thing and then you know it's the general population is just kind of like following along along that bell curve how, how much they follow along with it but humanity is fickle so in the next moment if some sort of leader comes to champion the white uh white male if they call for violence you're going to get violence because these People are fickle. They'll yeah. follow. They'll follow whatever feels inspiring and feels uh, like it's going to change uh, the status quo. You know, it's it's going to be like that. But we need to to be successful in in combating these things. We need to be representative of something different. So also, you know, let's let's make the determine let, let's let's make the distinction between <coughs> the, uh, uh, about our language. Um, and what things actually mean. So up until uh, after the Civil War, nobody had used the words black and white to indicate, you know, what a person was. Uh, that didn't exist. You didn't say black, white, brown, yellow, red. It's like these things didn't exist. You had nationalities. So somebody was French. Somebody was Nigerian. Somebody was Chinese um, or regions. But nobody was black or white. Black and white was created to create conflict between lower, uh, to create a uh, conflict between working class populations uh, that were unionizing. That was a big reason why anyway. And, and it worked. It worked so wonderfully for these uh, controllers. But nobody's black, nobody's white. You have many varying shades and colors. I would say I'm more like a pinkish, tannish thing i'm irish i'm scottish i'm norwegian i'm i'm uh blackfoot i where's white in any of that uh so i'm definitely a man that's correct language would would approve that uh but i'm not white and i've never met a white or black person in my life i've never met a red person i've never met a yellow person i've never met a brown person um 
but I've met people of all different kinds of shades and, 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 and flavors of humanity. And none of it means anything to me, except, uh, except when it comes to factual, statistical, measurable things. So, um, so when we use these terms like black or white to indicate the entire population of people of darker or lighter skin, um, we actually create uh, strange measurements of our society that don't are, are really as applicable. Like, like there's dark skinned uh, people in urban environments that are not uh, joining gangs and committing the violence that that's 70% or whatever, 75% of all gun violence in the country happens in urban um, black communities. But there but that's not a totality. These are bell yeah. curves and, and there's causes for all of it too. Um, just like the vast majority of suicides by, by handguns, um, or excuse me, suicide by firearms is um white males over 45, usually closer to 60 in rural environments. And I guess what I'm getting at is that that, that just we we blanket we, we, we use blanket terms to describe um, inadequate, inadequately the populations that we're measuring something by. And if we're starting with that fundament, at that fundamental place of how we're describing something, we're not going to describe it correctly. Uh, that's my, my, my contention on that. But, uh, but our language is being decimated the first article i ever wrote for liberty uncensored newspaper was about language and if somebody tries to get me to and it's happened many times somebody tries to get me to say um one of these pronouns uh whatever it is uh that that's not a factual uh true use of of the language as it has adapted and evolved over time from old english and and old germanic and latin and french english language takes in a lot of other languages if it is not correct to the actual way we're supposed to be using the language i'm not going to do that <laughs> it's nothing to do with what you want or what, it has nothing to do with you it has nothing to do with the other side of the conversation it has to do with me being true to the language that I use to describe the world around me. If I start changing it, I start thinking about it differently and I'm going to think about it in the way that the language allows to appropriately define the world. And, uh, if you use a pronoun that indicates that you're more than one person and you are one person, this is nonsense. It is not a correct use of the language. That's what I have a problem with. If you want to, if you want to feel like you are multiple people, that's fine. I probably won't be around you. I probably will walk away, but I'm not going to call you any other thing besides what I see. I'm going to call you as I see it. Um, and if you want to call me something, that's not what I, what I am a man. Um, you know, if you try to say that I'm Chinese, that doesn't make any sense. I'm not. So if you, if you, you know, these, these are so yeah. simple things. That I don't, I don't even know how we, <laughs> we get to the point where we have to discuss these things. It's so nonsensical. It's so idiotic. And, uh, we, I, I think we can just, we can't ignore it because it's, it's something that needs to be confronted, but ignoring it has gotten us here right but it's just nonsensical it, it is it is so extremely ignorant of of everything yeah. <laughs> every every angle that you might look at it it's just so extremely ignorant willfully ignorant because people know people know that they're not multiple people but they try to uh twist things around to get you to 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 compensate their uh inner feelings and their 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 turmoil and i think these yeah. things are all born of turmoil i don't think that any of this is born of like a person who's healthy in body and mind um i would have to agree yeah and, um it's it's interesting i'm i'm fascinated with this focus on hate like hate being this <clears throat> 
like the worst thing that that's always what it is it's you know hate speech or uh it's hate for this or that it's first of all it, hate is a strong word but i also don't believe that hate is also the worst thing in the entire world as some people would lead you to believe it's like well that's very hateful it's like well first of all we 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 can't just love everything all the time forever it's not how life works um and besides if there is no hate then the opposite doesn't mean anything <laughs> it's it only matters because there is an opposite um but that's that's what it seems to hinge on a lot is just the hate uh, there there's so much hate and they hate this community or hate this thing because they're unfamiliar with it it's it's new or foreign to them and um like the term xenophobia which is hilarious to me it's for anyone who doesn't know it's basically anything that seems foreign or uh unnatural and you tend to have a fear of that um it's used in the context of uh you know immigrants or um and anything that doesn't basically used to describe anyone who is going against this new narrative. So if you disagree with somebody about something, you're just, you're xenophobic, you're scared of change or whatever. It's like, well, first of all, I'm, I'm not scared. It's, it's not a phobia. <laughs> it's, it's usually just, I disagree with it because it's wrong, not because of whatever ideology you have. And just because I disagree with you, that doesn't make me wrong just because I'm not progressive in my way of thinking or I'm not open-minded like you, which I'm not sure how that became a, a virtue to be open-minded about everything. <clears throat> well, you just got to accept people for who they are. And so, well, no, I don't. <laughs> I definitely don't. Um, you know, I, I can uh, praise good things and I can uh, criticize bad things. Um, this idea that we can't criticize people because it's hateful is also entirely nonsensical. Um, it, it's how we self-govern. Uh, shame plays an important role in society. And of course it can be abused. And it, just like anything else, I think we've all seen examples of shame being used in an improper manner. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it plays an important role. Shame and um, ostrati ostracization. Ostracization. Yeah. 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 Um, we're we're you know we're pack creatures. We want to be a part of of the group, and to not be a part of the group is definitely scary to most. Um, but this idea that we just have to go along to go along because that somebody else, they're not hurting anybody. And so therefore we can't judge. Um, I, that doesn't make sense to me. If somebody does something bad, it, it's worth it to judge them, <laughs> you know, um, just because, uh, you know, like for, for instance, uh, drugs are always a good thing. You know, me being, at least on paper, a libertarian, I don't want people to be arrested for these things. I don't believe that it's a, a criminal issue. Um, or even prostitution is another good thing. I don't want people arrested for it. However, I definitely am not going to promote it as something normal. I'm not going to promote sex work as work, as, you know, the people like to say. Um, it's It's not normal. And it shouldn't be normalized. If you have to normalize it, it's not normal in the first place. And I'm not about to start normalizing it. I just don't want the state to come down and punish people for something that's probably going to happen anyways. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. So um, the idea of not wanting somebody arrested versus now I have to support and champion that thing. I'm, I'm not sure where that disconnect is, but... 
there, there's a huge, huge disconnect uh, within the freedom movement as well. Um, but the left seems to have weaponized that idea that uh, you have to accept people for who they are. You can't hurt their feelings because feelings are above all for some reason. And I see the right taking that and intentionally uh, now going out to hurt people's feelings uh, as a response. And I don't think that's the correct response. That the only correct response I see is just being truthful, like you were mentioning. Um, I'm not going to go out of my way to, you know, call some tranny a man because he is, but I will call them a man because that's what they are. Um, I also have no problem respecting pronouns depending on the situation. Um, but I'm also not going to live in your delusion and you can't force me to. So in Buddhism, there's um, four sins, and that is fear, ignorance, confusion, and doubt. These are considered the fundamental roots of all suffering. And when you can cut these off, then you liberate yourself. I think that a lot of people... I, I gauge a lot of people when I see them based on which of these they're expressing um, amongst all the other little smaller branches that kind of branch off each of those. Um, and hate is, well, well I, I don't think it's um, for anybody else to judge. It's kind of like, would you hate somebody who hates that doesn't make any sense because you're just doubling the amount of hate that exists and you're hurting yourself by creating hate in your body. And so if you can create equanimity in your body, if you can create peace in your mind and, and in yourself, what does it matter that somebody else hates? If they don't take any action against you or loved ones or, or community or whatever that you have to respond to. And even in that moment, somebody's stabbing you and they're full of hate, and they're full of fear, and they're full of uh, uh, just all these things. If you hate them for doing that, you're just doubling the hate. But you can, you can actually love them in a pure way, just as life, and still work to stop the problem that's confronting you. In the same sense, you expand that out to all of society. You have these people that are doing terrible things, um, if you hate them, you are just creating more problems in the world. You're create you're, you're doubling down on the amount of stuff there is to react to negatively and create negative reaction, uh, negative, uh, effects in the environment. But if you can have equanimity and, and observe from a peaceful place, and respond rather than react and i would say i would say even love um i th you you are correcting the problem just by your existence at that point everywhere you go everything you touch every experience that you have in the world is by is giving off something that's a corrective for the problems that exist because hurt people hurt people so you have all these traumatized people that are looking for solutions and they're being told what the solutions are by people who don't really care about them, by institutions that want to see conflict. So if you meet these people with love, patience, compassion, but also a indefatigable, a unstoppable force kind of energy that's, I'm not going to do what you want me to do just because you want me to do it. You can have that, still have love, still have compassion and empathy for them and, and respect them in, in whatever kind of way you can show your respect. Um, and then whatever they do has nothing to do with you. You have made the right choices for yourself and you've stood in your principles and you're being a virtuous person and what happens next is up to them. If you don't have hate, if you don't have 
uh, fear, doubt, confusion, ignorance. If you don't have these things going on, then you can respond to your environment very clearly and objectively, and you can walk through this world in a peaceful way and still have great effect on the world because you can still be clear, discriminative, observe what's happening around you and make choices. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, the, that little bit that I just said right there, if, if everybody could take that, if all these people who are, are having problems in their life could just take that little bit and absorb that very deeply in themselves and say, why am I hating these people and really follow that down and, and try something new, try to approach with love all the people that you currently hate. I think that everything would change uh, very fast, very rapidly. And that's the Renaissance, right? Versus the revolution the revolution. We're fighting each other. We're fighting something. The Renaissance is we're all uplifting together and we're seeing a new, so we're, we're looking around ourselves and we're saying, oh, what was a problem before is actually a solution. It's how we look at it. And there really isn't any, you know, there's, there's problems until you make that 90 degree turn in your perception and, and you see it in a whole new way. And then everything looks like a solution. And that's every, everything, everything, everything starts to open up in that way where that's actually something you can use. So even somebody else's hate, fear, ignorance, doubt, or confusion is something you can use to create change in a positive way if you just learn the mechanism. You just learn how to use it. This is something that I wrote about really recently, um, which is that, you know, a Liberty Uncensored, our, our media channel, is heavily censored which is hilarious because our name is liberty uncensored i always find it hilarious but like um on twitter they stopped us at 333 uh people uh, followers or whatever and they just held Odd it there. choice of numbers they, yeah right they just held it there for for months and then it started to inch up because i i did a lot of action. I, I put a lot of energy into it and then it inched up one, one person a week. <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, you know, I look at how many, cause that the little bars on the bottom of every post that tell you how many people have seen it. That's just how many people it was uh, that have scrolled by it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything about who opened it or anything. So I look at it and it's like 11, seven, three, and so they're not even putting it in front of people. It's not even getting to the people that are following us, right? Because if it was, we'd be getting 360 something, whatever we have now yeah. on Twitter. It would at least go to them, but it's not. So, you know, in, in, that, in that way and in, in other ways, um, in all our social media, we are extraordinarily censored. Um, and Same. and I, I find it super funny, but... Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Sorry. You're good. Um, so I do want to bring this up. My buddy David Fight uh, mentioned no one in the liberty movement is saying you have to support it. Um, I will disagree and say that I have had people tell me actively that I do have to support certain things because it's in line with the liberty, but it's that's not really what I'm addressing. I'm more addressing a, like a passive support. It's more of a, well, because they aren't hurting anyone, then there's no reason for you to be against it. And it's that I disagree with. Um, sex work, I think is the perfect example. Um, there are definitely people within the Liberty movement who are pro sex work. That's their thing. Um, and okay, if, if that's what you choose to focus on, I think there are definitely bigger problems, but to each their own. Um, just because it is morally correct that people shouldn't, you know, have the, have the threat of violence used against them in the form of a state um, to be persecuted for such a thing doesn't mean that this should be normalized. Um, I don't believe that it's normal. 
Um, and I'm not going to just accept that, you know, a, a prostitute or an OnlyFans worker, same thing basically, um, that they are the same as the plumber. Um, I'm not going to accept that, uh, you know, that this is a le legitimate choice for a large portion of society. Um, I don't believe that it should be. Um, usually the, the pro sex work people tend to be not just, I don't want it, to, want it to be illegal. They want a normalization of it. And that's where I disagree. That's where I depart from them. Um, I'm not about to go on a crusade to be, you know, demonizing it. I think adults can definitely make their own choices, but I'm not going to passively accept it as, as a virtuous choice to make. I, I don't think that that's right. And I, that's more of the, uh, the support that I'm talking about is that it's, it's a passive support that we're not supposed to speak out against certain things, especially within the libertarian party. Um, it's, it's just really interesting. Um, I'm not going to use the state against you, but I'm also not going to tell my neighbors that it's totally fine and okay. I don't believe that it's acceptable. Um, and I'm also not going to spare their feelings um, and hide my feelings as far as that goes. I, I don't think I'd be doing anyone a service by holding myself back just to spare somebody's feelings. There's also, again, going back to the patterns that exist throughout history, prostitution, um, or what I guess what's being called sex work today, trying to soften the language uh, to make it more acceptable, prostitution is something that comes about, um, you know, it, it exists perpetually. There is a certain yeah. amount of it that exists in any society at any time perpetually. But how much of it exists is almost directly corollary to the lack of virtue, the lack of strong family units and, and the core family. Uh, so basically, the smaller the family gets, the notion of the family the larger you can see prostitution getting in that society, the more scarcity of uh, resources from jobs to money, you know, all the things that relate to what you can provide for, um, for yourself doing other things, the less that that exists in, in possibility, the more prostitution that you have. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just like the, 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 the less freedoms that exist, the, the less liberty oriented a society is, the more gangs and mafias and, and other structures come about to um, provide security for smaller populations of unique uh, groups of people. Uh, you know, the mafia in the United States really grew strong in the 20s when they started to regulate firearms, uh, the Tommy gun specifically um, and machine guns that so you got to look at it from the perspective of not like, so, you know, it's kind of the woke idealism, the postmodernism that says you could do anything that you want just because you are, you're alive and that's it. Do but what actually, thou wilt. But, but actually like, are, are you encroaching upon my rights by doing anything that you want in some circumstances? Yes. Cause I also have inherent rights and they are not listed in a bill of rights. They're, they're expansive as the universe. I have so many rights to my existence. When I am, when I am conceived, I have rights just by the fact that I exist. Yep. The only way you can encroach upon my rights is by acting outside of your rights. And that is like causing harm to me. Um, which isn't a right. You don't have a right to cause harm to someone else because that's outside of your rights as well. So there, there's, there's these very clear boundaries, very d distinct boundaries that we, a, a society uh, existing in Liberty would have a healthy society because we just naturally would align to these things, these inherent rights, because they're, they're common sense, you know, but then you get into a scarce environment and people start to look to things that are outside of their rights to survive uh, and to provide for their families. Um, 
So yeah. yes, everybody has the right, everybody has the means to do anything that they want. Um, anybody can choose to go and murder somebody else. But that's not a liberty. That's not a society born in liberty. If everybody's just going around murdering everybody or stealing from everybody, so you can do anything uh, within within the limits of what's possible for you. But you don't have a free society under that. There's guiding principles for for human beings to live in a society where every single person can live free. It's almost like that rebellious nature of the teenager. You, you give any rule, like you, you say something that feels like an imposition and people start to say, no, I'm going to do the opposite of that. Yeah. And I so, still have that. <laughs> so when you're talking about your right, people get confused. Oh, sorry. People get confused with this like mandated thing. It, it, the difference between like legislative law and your rights these are very different things nobody's mandating you with your rights these are things that you just have inherently yeah when you act outside of them you're creating a uh, you're, you're doing a crime because your rights expand everywhere up to the line of a crime you have the right to do anything besides create a victim yeah they bump right up next to everyone else's <clears throat> Right. So prostitution, sure. If you if you're an individual and you haven't been coerced, there's no pimp involved. There's no government influencing you. There's no neighbor uh, raping you. There's no none of the other stuff. You just choose. You know, you you turn eighteen or whatever. I don't, I don't even care about the the your age of adulthood. You know, but um, but you're an you're an adult, right? Whatever. And you choose to become a prostitute. Fine. I'm so happy for you. You're making choices of your own free will. You're not coercing other people into it and trying to steal from them. You're not trying to assault anybody. You're just making a choice to do something with your life, with your own body. Okay. How likely is it that that is going to be your choice, especially for women, young women, right? How likely is it that that's going to be your choice in an environment where you have other choices? And when you have the abundance to go and get um, a job that can actually provide for you or get a husband that can provide for you um, a, a family that can that can support you until you figure out your situation or well you know whatever the circumstance is uh, how likely are you going to choose to go and sell your body to have people penetrate you I mean we can we can get into that that's that's traumatic experiences um, uh, to have strangers uh, penetrating women. You talk to women after they've been uh, prostituting themselves. If they haven't gone too far with it and they're willing to be open with you about it, there's no positive outcome for that. So, um, and you know, people can argue with me all they want. Um, these are my personal experiences, my personal conversations with women, my personal encounters with these kinds of circumstances. I don't think I've ever found personally direct experience a prostitute who was truly happy with their profession, who was truly saying, yes, this is what I wanted to do. I dreamed about this as a kid. Uh, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. Um, so and again, that's just the example mm -hmm. that was brought up. There's so many yeah. others uh, that. So I, I was actually going to, I was actually you know, going to bring up a, another example of this, for instance, like the, the civil rights act, something I'm very much against um, the freedom of association is massive to me. Um, I believe that people have a right to discriminate based on race. If they choose to do so, we don't need the government coming in telling us that, no, you can't, but just because they have the right to do so, that doesn't mean that I'm going to, be passive about it and because I don't think that that's a good thing to do that. I think it's an in, a, a ignorant thing to do. Um, so I don't want the state coming in mandating that you have to do business with certain people or you can't exclude certain people. It's not the place of government. However, I'm also not going to be passive about it and just not say anything about how much of an asshole they are. Um, 
and passively accepted. Um, I have, oh, it's, it's, it's interesting because some people do view uh, racism to be acceptable. I, th I think that's abhorrent, but just because somebody else views it to be acceptable doesn't mean I do. And it just because they do doesn't mean that I have to accept that. Uh, I am not going to accept that as a as a thing just because I don't want the state coming in and arresting you because you run a business and choose not to serve white people or choose not to serve black people. Um, yeah, I don't want you arrested for it. That that seems extreme, <clears throat> but. I'm still going to criticize you for being an asshole because you're not making society better. Um, and it's, I, I do view it as the exact same. I'm going to criticize things that, that I have come to learn to be a net negative for society as a whole. Um, I'm not going to use the state to enforce these things. Um, but I'm not going to not speak out against it just because somebody else views it differently. Um, because obviously there are plenty of people out there that view prostitution as a completely moral thing to do. Um, I don't believe it's moral. So I'm not going to pretend like it is. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not going to hide that to spare somebody's feelings. Um, I'm just not going to send the cops to your house. You know, that's, that's the only thing. Um, I will be critical and that, that, that's about it. I mean, I, I still don't understand what the problem is with that either <clears throat> because they're going to disagree with me as well. Um, and they're going to, you know, call me a prude or whatever it may be, a Puritan, you know, I've actually been called these things before because of the position I hold and that's fine. I'm not going to get upset about it though. Um, it, it's taking self-governance into, into our own hands. Um, there's always going to be a group of people that feel that it's acceptable. Um, I do believe that there is enough empirical evidence to show that sex work the more it spreads, um, the more negatively society is impacted. Um, and I think we, we have enough evidence from several other countries, but also this country as well, to be able to say that maybe this, this shouldn't be promoted as uh, your, your first choice. Um, now, if it literally did come down in an extreme situation between you sell yourself or you're going to starve. Okay. Yeah. I guess I see the moral argument there, but that's not what's happening as a whole in our modern society. Um, lots of women just choose the easy way out. And I think it's lazy. Um, there are different, there are many other options and, you know, watching podcasts like the whatever podcast or any of these other dating shows or whatever it's fascinating because the women will say well i can't make as much money uh doing something else or i can't make as much money you know working with the degree i went to college for like yeah of course you can't you know the easy money um is just that it's easy money but you're usually selling something else not just uh not just your body usually your virtue your soul i place a certain importance on these things other people don't and that's just where we disagree um and ultimately a society will work itself out as far as that goes um because there is going to be a certain level of healthy mob mentality to where society deems certain acts or certain mentalities to not be healthy and uh that's the marketplace of uh ideas you know, we try things, we work it out, and if it doesn't work, then we tend to not continue it. Um, and I think that's why there's an aversion to prostitution in the first place is there's many, many years of us seeing the consequences of promoting such a thing in society. 
So, you know, it's not entirely unfounded. So, you know, hopefully that kind of clears that up though. Um, Cause I do agree with David. There's, there's outside of a small handful of a couple of people that have actually told me that you have to uh, support things like that. And I, I don't take those people as real people. Um, it, it's not a, uh, Oh, you have, to support this it's it's more nuanced than that you know what made this country really novel and great was the difference of opinion of the population uh, and the ability to live within that opinion so every individual can have a different thought about the same you know one topic everybody thinks something different about it that's absolutely okay yeah. The second you get to some point where people are trying to demand of you to think the way that they think and they're willing to bring violence into it, like calling government or, you know, making a mob and coming after you or whatever, that's tyranny. That's 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 violent. That's oppositional to uh, inherent rights. And this country is great because as far as I'm aware, it's the first country that uh, affirmed the people's right to express and think and do as they will and uh and so again you know okay so it used to be i remember as a kid people could have conversations disagree with each other and be okay and be good friends and yeah. one, per one person agrees with with uh war and another person doesn't hey go join the war if you want you know the one might say and the other one might be like ah oh, you pacifist and then they go and get a beer together <laughs> Yeah. Now it's like you, you warmonger, uh, you better go to jail now. I'm going to call the cops on you. Well, that, that shows the extent of the problem right there. If you can't have a, a conversation with someone and, and you, you, you have a disagreement with what they're saying, whatever, if you can't maintain that equanimity, that balance in yourself and just say, Oh, you, he or she thinks that way. That's okay. I'm still thinking this way. That's perfectly acceptable. If your feelings, if your, uh, if, if if the composition of you is determined by other people agreeing with you, you have some serious problems that you need to resolve. You need to great grow your your self confidence and your self worth. Um, you need to probably try your beliefs out in real time and see see what sticks. Um, Everybody, everywhere, if you are born, you have the right to think, speak, and do as you will. And the only time that it becomes a problem is when there's authoritarianism. Somebody coming around and saying, I'm going to do something to you if, you if you say the wrong thing. Yep. It's, it's interesting. We'll, we'll wrap up on this. Um, I find it interesting. Uh, people who are critical of anarchy... Um, because a lot of people have this idea that anarchists are inherently against, uh, you know, like the hierarchy. It's like, well, that's, that's not true because there is such thing as a natural hierarchy. Um, I always like pointing out to, uh, just and unjust authority. The government can disappear right now, and that little sign at the store that says employees only is still going to have an, a just authority. And just because the government's not there doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to have just a bunch of people walking in an employee-only area. Um, nobody fights that because it's a just authority. There is a a just authority that is natural that occurs in nature that just it just is it isn't good it isn't bad it just is and my personal belief is that government is the thing that fights against that which is what makes uh not only everything government uh does fail miserably like a like an acme product from you know the, the looney tunes but because it's going against the natural grain of things, uh, that's why we 
keep seeing all these problems. So my belief is that anarchists aren't against the hierarchy, uh, just unjust ones. And anarchy is the natural state. It works every day. What doesn't work is authoritarianism because it keeps causing problems. Um, it's like the difference between following the flow of a river and walking against the current. Uh, governments walking against the current, whereas in anarchy, you're just floating along the river and trying to uh, avoid some rocks. So anarchy works on a daily basis. It always has and it always will, regardless of what authoritarian power is in place to try and subvert it. And to be able to get back to that is really my goal, is really a lot of people's goal. And it seems to be yours as well as to let human nature flourish the way that it should and enforce uh, the, the things that do violate the rights of others. Uh, we do not have an authority or we, we do not have an, a right that requires somebody else's labor. Um, we do not have a right to uh, cross anyone's boundary without their explicit consent um, and pretty much you, you follow that, you don't hurt people, you don't take their stuff, and we can live in a really peaceful society whether we agree or disagree. And uh, yeah, it's it seems so obvious to me, and it's really hard when people just don't see that, especially when they're uh, in the movement saying, oh, well, you anarchists are just... Uh, you're crazy. You just want chaos. It's like, well, that's a fundamental misunderstanding of uh, the terms in which we speak. So, um, any any parting words? Any anything to add to that? Well, anarchy is not chaos. Anarchy just means no masters. So, anarchon. It it just means you are the master of you. You are a self-determined individual. You make choices for yourself. Nobody else is making choices for you or coercing or uh, threatening or committing violence against you, trampling on your rights to get you to do something that you don't want to do. So uh, you said you're an anarcho-capitalist. Um, I, gen I generally don't put them together, but free markets and anarchy go, go hand in hand. Uh, it means that you have choice to do what you will. Uh, but when we have government come into the free market and manipulate things, well, that changes everything. We have government come into anarchy and start doing things and, and create libertarianism there. Well, that changes everything. So I'm a purist anarchist, but I'm also a capitalist in the in the truest sense of that, the, the ultimate free market, that if you have a, a service or a product or, or something that you do in the world and you want to exchange it for somebody else's something, you have the right to do that. If it's you know, truly a free market and, and, and both are voluntarily giving themselves to that exchange. Um, in the same way, all energy exchanges in anarchy act that way. Um, and now instead of anarchy, you know, we say volunt uh, 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 voluntarism. Uh, and I think it's a, one of those softening the language things. It's like trying to get people who have been manipulated to think anarchy is chaos and throwing bricks yep. through windows and wearing black, uh, all that stuff. Uh, we have to give Damn them a new leftist. name. We have to give them the new, a new name. No, anarchy is, it has etymology. It means something. So I'm going to always say anarchy. I am a purist anarchist. And I even uh, uh, came up with spiritual anarchy because true spirituality to me follows the same course as as the definition of anarchy, becoming the master of yourself, mastering yourself, becoming the ultimate observer of yourself, becoming aware of the world of yourself. So uh, it all kind of flows into the same space. I think that anarchy is the highest order that we can possibly find. And as far as an uh, 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 hierarchies, I wrote an essay on, uh, I, I called it organic hierarchy versus inorganic hierarchy, something like that. And an organic hierarchy is when it takes no effort. It's, it's just, it kind of clicks in. Right. Yep. And 
and it's just where everything fits. And when it comes to human interactions, right, if we're talking about human hierarchies, uh, that, that takes a certain level of humility and emotional uh, intelligence and, 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 and clear perception of self and, and what's around you. It takes a very enlightened envi- a, a, a society to get to that point. An inorganic hierarchy is if I were to come to you and say, do what I tell you to do or or I'm going to do something to you, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to cause something that that's going to be unpleasant to you if you don't do it. That, that, that's an inorganic hierarchy. That's when it starts to form that. So every government that's ever existed is part of an inorganic hierarchy. It's outside of the inherent rights of man. And it is in violation of, of the natural order of life in this 3d matrix holographic universe uh, world that we live in. And for all those people who think that they could just do whatever they want, um, good luck to you because there are rules to the, the, the physical nature of the universe and there's rules to the organization of the biology of life. Good luck. The rest of us will yeah. live naturally and naturally organize ourselves and, and naturally have hierarchies and, um, and we'll be healthier. Uh, unless they genocide all of us. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's a, a likelihood because the second that starts in a place like this, in, in a place like the United States of America, um, you know, 400 million guns come out. So I think that alone is enough. I would have to agree. Um, go ahead and let people know where they can, uh, where they can find you, uh, what you have going on, uh, you know, the best place to reach you, all of that good stuff. Sure. So my name is Corey Haig. Uh, you can find most of my content that I'm producing right now. It goes on my Substack, So libertyuncensored.substack.com um, right there. And uh, you can also go to coreyhaig.com. Although the website is having problems, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. I don't know what's going on with it. And it's, it's been a year long process of trying to figure out why it's doing what it's doing. Who knows? Um, but you can go to coreyhaig.com. Um you can find any of my, my books and I'm writing my third book right now. So you can find my other two books anywhere where books are sold online. Um, and that's about it. That's about it for now. Um, I encourage everybody to go and see a rainbow gathering, visit a rainbow gathering, um, in the United States, because while it is highly imperfect, it is the longest running anarchist society. The rules that govern that space um, are anarchist uh, uh, in nature. Um, so it's inter- interesting to to experience that in real time. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm definitely curious, uh, especially if it's not uh, a gay pride parade because no no know, no. The, yeah. there, <laughs> just just making a joke because of the rainbow thing. Yeah no there there is a <laughs> lot of wokeism. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, that, that kind of stuff going on is Um, always is, but, but you can, you, it, it can be a good experience for anybody. If you know how to navigate, you know, your way through that. Um, and well, you'll find true. me there and you'll find me there. Every, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't missed one in many years. Um, and this, the, the coming up national gathering is going to be in California. Um, uh, and it always happens June 1st through June 7th. Hell yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, just, yeah, and, uh, and, I, I, and Liberty Uncensored is extremely censored. The only way we get our information out there <laughs> is with the support of people sharing it. So I, I, I hope that, you know, if you're watching this, that you come over, look through our content, see if you like it and, and, uh, subscribe, um, become a paid subscriber if you can that way we can spend more time uh on on writing content and, and doing interviews and and getting out there and doing that um but if not just share it share our content because we can't it, <laughs> they they got a governor on our on our uh our vehicle here so um exactly. share, it, share it as far and wide as you can um you know become a subscriber support us in any way you can it would be highly appreciated and and we have a lot of goals and dreams um, coming up here for, for what we want to achieve. Um, and it takes us being able to bypass these 
uh, limitations that are that are actively being put on us. Um, and it's more than just the social media. It's it's quite a lot. So um, if you can support. That would be wonderful. Hell yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much for hopping on with me. I definitely want to get you back. I think there's there's a lot more for us to get into and uh, a lot a lot more uh, working together to be able to promote each other and get this message out there. Um, so for everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rise to Liberty podcast. You can go ahead and find us at rise to liberty.com slash links. That is the master link that will pull up everything. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, just trying to clear everything up, make it more efficient, make it less uh, susceptible to censorship, uh, working on s- possible new servers to be able to uh, host my own things. So our big tech overlords can't do anything about it. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we've got some great guests coming up. Uh, I will be interviewing Brandon Joe Williams here in just about a 45 minutes or so, uh, speaking about how to never pay taxes again legally. Nice. So it's, it's the dream where we're trying to focus on solutions here. And, uh, you know, I think it's about time. So make sure to tune into that. Make sure and go subscribe to uh, Corey and everything he's got going on. And uh, otherwise, until next time, stay free, my friends.